So here we have an old lipidodendron fossil. So lipidodendrons were uh, gigantic trees that existed in the Carboniferous period for a very long time. Um, and they're not related to any modern tree. So they're actually more closely related to a group of very weird plants called the um, quillworts, which are very minor and a lot of them are very endangered and going extinct. And they use spores to reproduce. So they don't have seeds. These existed way before uh, flowers existed, way, way um, before seeds existed. Um, and at the end of their lifetime, they did exist alongside seeds and um, seed plants eventually led to their extinction because they're more efficient than um, the spores of this tree. So what we're looking at is actually the imprint of the bark of the lepidodendron on a forest floor in the Carboniferous period. And this was found, um, this is about 280 million years old, uh, this outline, um, and it was found in a coal deposit in West Virginia. So these lepidodendrons used to cover a lot of the world. Um, the world looked nothing like it uh, does today. Uh, it wasn't split in, up into the modern continents that we have today, like North America, South America. Those didn't even exist yet. Um, so it covered a lot of um, the world today, especially the eastern U.S. Um, I'm not really sure about the other places, but I know it was extremely widespread. And Lepidodendron is actually a genus. It's extinct. Um, and as I was saying, it's related to the quillworts, which are very weird. Um, the quillworts usually grow no, to no more than like a foot or two tall now. And I've never actually seen one or found one, but um, they're very uncommon. But... Um, as I was saying, this is the outline of the bark. So the bark on these, uh, they're also called scale trees because of their, like, scaly bark. If you see, there's definitely a pattern in there. Um, and it is a lot more pronounced on other fossils. This one's not too well preserved because it was pulled out of a coal mine, uh, where it was probably mistreated very badly, and it just didn't fossilize that well. Um, a lot of them, you can see the spikes on the bark um, and their outline in it. I encourage you guys to look those up. Um, any of those pictures, they have some really nice ones. Um, and on the back side, you can see oops, some coal, a little bit of coal, and some of the forest floor and just some other rock that was mixed in um, pretty cool actually not sure what that is huh. yeah lipidodendron um, and these things used to grow to uh, usually around 100 feet uh, I've seen that they can grow up to 160 feet tall which is like taller than a lot of the trees we have the vast majority of the trees we have in the modern eastern United States. Um, I know it's nothing compared to a redwood, but it is very tall um, for any tree besides like the extremely large, pretty much. Um, so pretty impressive they could get to that size. Um, and uh, they reproduce using spores, which was their downfall. So they could only really reproduce in wet areas, so the more drier interiors of the continents that they ex um, existed in, they couldn't really colonize like the seed plants like conifers could, really early seed plants like uh, the conifers and the cycads and a couple others. Um, and this was still before flowers even existed, so no angiosperms existed um, at this time. And then they went extinct around 200 million years ago. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, not found today. Pretty cool. And these are uh, what makes up a lot, like probably a majority, of the coal deposits in the eastern U.S. that West Virginia and Ohio and Virginia are all known for their coal.
and that's because of these ancient forests. Pretty cool. All right. Have a good one. See you guys. Remember to grow native.